you know, more challenge in the regular mode, but apart from that, it's basically if you die, or at least if you die enough times on the regular, you have to start the level over, and I don't think you have to on easy mode. See, they, they could tell that it was so stupid and unfair at points and frustrating, potentially frustrating, that they even made it so, you know, the infinite continues thing, I mean, isn't that kind of admitting that you kind of screwed up, you didn't make it fun enough or balanced enough? But yeah, the guarding, I mean, I'm not saying every single game should have a guard function. I'm just saying, in a game like this, you know, I mean, you're almost always outnumbered, and your enemies, you know, can dish out plenty of moves just like you. And sometimes, you, you know, your character will, for some reason, jump away from the enemy instead of towards him, or you know, attack in the wrong direction or whatever, and you'll, you know, you'll be desperately wanting just a button that you can press and then you're guarding, or just something to properly get out of the way so you don't take the damage. I mean, there's not enough health in the game. I'd also have to say, yes, Nightcrawler is in this game, but this is probably the worst control over his teleportation I've seen yet. If you want proper control over Nightcrawler's teleportation, go download a demo, if it's still up, of um, X-Men the official video game, or, you know, find um, uh, X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse. I don't know if it's in one, I've only tried the second one. But yeah, the, the gameplay is just repetitive and boring. It's nowhere near varied enough. The game is nowhere near varied enough. Um, also, you fight like the same three or four enemy types through the entire thing. The controls are kind of awkward. At times they can be downright sluggish. And I don't think you can change them. I haven't found any way to do so. Something that is nice about this that LEGO Star Wars doesn't have is the fact that the your ally... I mean, apart from... I mean, I've only tried the Wii uh, version of uh, LEGO Star Wars, so maybe this is different for the other uh, console versions. But in that, I had to walk up to the um, my ally to switch with him. And there are a couple of places where you need to very quickly switch to the other one. In this, it's just, you know, press of a button and you're instantly there. It could do a better job of letting you know, yes, now you're controlling the other one. I mean, it doesn't, like, blink or something. But... And it is nice, unlike LEGO Star Wars, your allies actually do stuff, you know. I mean, in LEGO Star Wars, if they're fighting, they're basically just not dying. They can't kill the enemies. You have to kill all the enemies yourself. In this, you know, your ally will pull his weight, you know, and he, he, he can kill the enemies, he can pick up um, the crystals and whatnot. The camera is really bad. It, I mean, it's... When you're lucky, it follows you okay and gives you a good enough angle, but too often it's zoomed so far out that you can't tell where you are or what exactly is going on on the, I mean, you, you know, who's beating who, um, because they're all so tiny on the screen because it's zoomed out uh, so far. Sometimes it'll suddenly decide to follow your ally, literally leaving you off the screen. I'm not joking. This has actually happened. And I can't, I haven't seen any way to turn the camera back. Or sometimes it'll be facing away from something you have to be looking at. And there's just nothing you can do other than try to move around and hope that it picks up that it's supposed to be moving with you. The whole thing just feels rushed. Why does it lag on the menu? I thought that only happened with computers that weren't, like, up to date for the game. How is it lagging on the menu. Maybe that's a weird complaint. It just... Also, why is the OK button there before it's done saving or loading? What happens if I press it? There's also plenty of glitches in this thing. For example, in the AI, I mean, enemies will literally walk right past you, not even 
trying to attack you, or they'll stand idly by, and you can walk right up to them. You can sometimes even attack them, and they'll do nothing, and just... And this isn't something that just happened once or twice. This is a regular occurrence. This is... I would say that this is rushed, and probably because it was meant to... Because they wanted it to be released around the time when the show started airing. The fights against the villains are way too obviously staged. I mean, it feels like we're suddenly in a, you know, tournament beat-em-up uh, game. You know, when did it become Tekken? And they're not even all that fun, I would say. Um, I will give them that one of the settings is pretty cool. If they could have done more with it, I'd say. Also, just the way they treat some of um, these characters' powers. I mean, as Thor, you literally remove the ice from a plane to save it, mind you, with the hammer, with Mjolnir. How... When... What? Huh? That makes no sense, since when... He makes thunder and lightning. I would know, I'm Danish. It makes no sense. It uh, That's not what his power is. It's, you know, force. How can he possibly be removing the ice by, you know, violently using the hammer without smashing the plane? I mean, forget the fact that something that has been frozen being struck with, an, with another object is more likely to break than just the ice itself breaking. Why does it create continuity errors that don't need to exist for all of it, you're briefed by Ms. Marvel, and yet you can take her with you on several missions, and she'll still be there in the objective, on the objective screen, you know, communicating with you from the headquarters. It just, would it have been that much trouble just to replace that picture with someone else, or to choose a character that wasn't going to be put in the game? Storm's power is also just Weird. It's like she creates little lightning bolts no matter what fighting move she does. You know, you punch or you use the range, and no matter what, it creates little, I don't know, lightning or wind or something. It's just, it's as if they forgot that it's weather, period. It's not just, you know, storm creates storms and lightning. I will say that the music is pretty kicking, and that theme is just impossible to get out of your head. But that's about all, all I can say of positive for it. And this is where I get into the character stuff. It's, it's very silly, very goofy. All the characters are one-note stereotypical, and frankly obnoxious. I don't know, if, um, just, just to give an example, Silver Surfer is literally a surfer type. And the, the humor isn't funny, the, the jokes and gags are lame, their delivery is just painful, they are trying way too hard to make you laugh, and it just... I can frankly imagine children, children, you know, not laughing at this. I, I don't know why uh, Stan Lee has put up with this sucking out the dignity of his beloved creations. Not sure there's much else to say. Like Lego Star Wars, it has the instant drop in and out um, instant drop in and out thing uh, where a second player can just, you know, at any point join in and at any point drop out, as far as I know. Yeah, um... I hate to say it, but... I mean, if you want a game with these characters, try one of the Legends ones. I think if you haven't tried either and you think the basic idea of what I've described here sounds like it might be fun, maybe try LEGO Star Wars first. I'd imagine it'd be cheaper, it's older. Yeah, that's it for this one. See you next time.